Carla, prima caro. Lei deve comunicare alla famiglia che troveranno il corpo dell'onorevole Aldo Moro in via Caetano, lì siamo a Renault 4 Rossa. I primi numeri di targa sono N5. Not too far away from Largo, Argentina, we enter a little side street known as Via Caetani. And in Via de Caetani, we like to also mention on this little mini series, a more recent crime occurs in 1978. A former prime minister known as Aldo Moro was kidnapped by an organized terrorist group known as the Red Brigade, held captive for 55 days. And after 55 days of no negotiations, the lifeless body of Aldo Moro was found in the trunk of a car, a red Renault to be exact, exactly in the location where we'd like to show you soon. Aldo Moro was a party secretary of the Christian Democrats, a democristiani in Italian. He was supposed to partake in a new inauguration of the government in 1978. But as soon as he left his house on the 16th of March of 1978, at 9 in the morning, his car was intercepted by a terrorist group, a terrorist group known as the Red Brigade or Brigade Rossi. Aldo Moro's lifeless body was found in this very exact location where we're standing here today. He was found behind the trunk of a red Renault, a French car, a red Renault. The police officer's report will say that his body was wrapped around a blanket with seven gunshot wounds to the chest. The story of Aldo Moro is a little bit more in depth than what we just explained right here today, but we'd like to invite you to our personal criminal tour of Rome to give you guys more insight of the ins and outs of this horrific recent crime that shook the public opinion in Rome and in Italy in general. A short walk from Villa Gaetani, we're gonna enter the Jewish ghetto. Another particular spot on our little crime tour, crime scene tour of Rome, because we'd like to mention something, unfortunately, that has occurred over 75 years ago inside the Jewish ghetto a beautiful neighborhood, a very quaint neighborhood, but of course the echoes of the previous war, World War II, still have a strong reverb inside these walls. Follow me. Here we are, we've entered the beautiful Jewish ghetto in Rome. The crime that we'd like to mention here, unfortunately, is more focused on a war crime. Now we'll also be mentioning about the deportation of 1,200 citizens of Rome from the Jewish ghetto to the unfortunate war camps. As we all know, the concentration camps where most of the Jewish citizens of Rome were taken, mostly Auschwitz and Birkenau. To dedicate this unfortunate memory, we have the Shoah, or the uh, memory, recalls the area where 1,200 citizens of Rome were rounded up by the SS officers. And this place is nowhere but over here to our left-hand side, as you guys can see. How do we allow 1,200 citizens of Rome to be taken away and never be seen again? Well, as we know, September of 43 is the collapse of fascism in Italy, and um, the former allies of Italy, being the Nazis, overrun Rome, control Rome. We have Lieutenant Colonel Kapler who decides to, by the order, direct order of Berlin, to indict the arrest of a thousand tortured citizens of Rome, men, women, and children alike, let's not forget everybody, to be taken away at the concentration camps. And the only thing that remains to commemorate these people are bronze plaques we'd like to show you soon enough. To commemorate and to never forget of what has happened here in the Jewish ghetto and also in other theaters of Europe, for the Shoah purposes, we also have commemoration plaques just to never forget the memories of these men, women, and children been taken away. Just above our heads, we have written Largo 16 Ottobre 1943, 1943, because the open space we see right here in front of us was exactly where the trucks came to pick up the 1,200 citizens of Rome to never be seen again. To commemorate the memory of these men, women, and children, we are leaving bronze plaques at the doorstep of their houses. It's the best way to honor their memory. So if you'd like to, we can get a little bit closer and read them because we begin with Ada Spizzichino, who was born in 1915, arrested 16th of October 1943. As you will see, 
they all bear the same date, 16th of October 1943, as a day of arrest. Ada Spitsikina was no more than in her 30s. Grazia Di Segno was born in 1989. Judith Spitsikina was born in 1922. Thank you for joining us on our Untold Stories of Rome. If you like what you hear, please subscribe to our channel, leave us a like and a comment, and until uh, next time, ciao.